Welcome back everybody to the desk here at the PCC. My name is Ardog with the Triple G and I'm your host, joined by our desk analyst Ed and Lance with their dogs. I don't have a dog, but <laughs> we just watched game one and we potentially have our last game of the day between the Hive and Indecisive. There's a lot at stake for them. If they want to advance to the semifinals tomorrow, they can't afford to lose this game. There is one player that I do want to highlight from that first game though. I want to highlight that Neft played well as a Wraith. Ed, talk to us about these Wraith statistics. I mean, we really don't see a lot of Wraith in this tournament so far, but when he's there, I mean, look what just happened. You you put you put Neft on him and it's just a whole sight to see. But only 19 games in this whole tournament, uh, really not a factor at all with only a 10, less than a 10% ban rate, but when he's in, he's winning. So Wraith's definitely a factor that's kind of just been swept under the rug. And definitely not a lot of players can play that Wraith, but when it's in the right hands, look at how much he's able to put in. That is a high uh, win rate right there. That's 58%. Now, we got to go into this draft. Is this something that they want to take away? Are they going to be banning that Wraith from, from their hands there? Lance, what are you expecting to see in this Game 2 draft? I don't think they can target Neft. I just don't think it's worth it. In order to do that, you're going to have to have Indecisive not pick an ADC in their first round, pick it up with your last pick, and then ban it to try to take two away potentially. But I don't think with as good of a player as Neft is that it is a good idea to go that direction. We are going to see the Gideon ban come out right away from Indecisive, who have the first pick in this game. It will be interesting to see what way Hive tries to go. Maybe they get rid of the Bellica, but it felt like they had so many problems in that last game that one ban isn't going to be the solution. Yeah, I really think Crunch is going to be the first hero off the board for Hive here. Uh, just the way that he dominated the last game there, I'd... You, you don't want to repeat of that. No, let's just really, really couldn't play the game. And that kind of just took him out of everything with, especially with Neff just scaling like crazy in the, in the duo lane. Um, I think Gideon is an oak is a good ban here. Overall. We know atomic loves a Gideon. Uh, we see the Zaras come in. So a little bit more of a maybe target ban for morose again, but the guy's a gamer on Grux too. So, um, there's just not too much, too many options from there. Uh, Argus here is a, Again, first pick from them. Um, we saw that uh, there was a lot of a lot of great plays with that, and it really set up Neff to just scale. Mm, but it's going to be Hive who picks up Bellica this time. That way, they're not giving over the two flex picks, and instead of taking the crunch away through ban, they're actually going to pick it themselves. And this is a Nugslet special. He really, really likes his hero before import playing in that last game. I think he's the only person other than six earlier today that we've seen play crunch in a PCC in what feels like months and we talked about how you can't waste a ban on wraith against indecisive even with it up they decide to take the drongo and once again they're going to put morose onto grux yeah i think the drongo was a great pick by indecisive to kind of counter that crunch because with crunch is dashing at you you just silence them and and you're home safe you know especially with an argus having his stuns and his pillar that he can put up to block that crunch i think that's a really really good smart pick by indecisive uh you know you see the grux here again too so this could look a little bit of a repeat from the last game but i think overall guru played really well as a severog into a grux um phase ban here now too so they're trying to just put put hive and uh, uh warps into a situation to where there's no getaway so neff can just keep doing what he does gonna be followed up with the chimera ban two heroes we've seen banned in this rotation particularly quite a few times today as i think phase has been banned in this phase more than she has been a first one if you exclude the professor's constantly first banning it so interesting to see what's still available a lot of flexibility on indecisives a little bit on hive as well as the bellica not necessarily revealed where they're gonna go you see the Sephiroth gonna be picked up for guru once again into morose even though that lane it wasn't necessarily guru's fault that that lane went as poorly as it did but it did allow them to move into that enemy blue side and we'll see indecisive pick up the howitzer so that should be for shin 
once again putting man q in the support role onto the argus and they're gonna follow it all up with a rampage which i am very confident is imports favorite and most preferred hero yeah this is a really good draft by indecisive that's a lot of beef and cc followed by a ton of damage coming through with the howitzer and drongo this could be this could be pretty tough for hive again hopefully it goes a little bit better for him than last game but yeah this is this is going to be interesting um you know with uh with a mid or support flex here okay we see the narbash definitely come in i think that's a pretty good one they're going to need as much help as they can to sustain in these fights to kind of counter a a rampage r or you know the grux cc that comes with it so i like the narbash pick up here i like All it right, as well but i was we have the draft um lance you were thinking saying about the sustain there with the, the narbash correct me if i'm wrong but what are you liking there I am liking it, but I was actually expecting them to put this Bellica into the support role on Boinks. I thought that they might whip out maybe some sort of special mid laner for Atomic here. Maybe pick up the Countess or something else that he can try to pilot. Well, I know he's got some skills on the Bellica too, but I know that's something that Boinks likes as well. Maybe trying to allow Boinks to facilitate more and do more to help Twin Blast out and Warps out here on the Narvash as... If they can get to late game, there is a lot of damage that comes out of the Twin Blast. There's a lot of healing that comes out of the Narbash too. There's definitely a lot of CC coming from this team comp from the Hive. But Ed, I gotta ask, this. there's a lot at stake here for game number two. How can they win with this team comp? Um, and how can they secure game number two uh, with the team comp that Hive is playing with? they definitely need to just play slower you know indecisive is really good at the objectives and that's what they're going to try to do through their focal points but they have a pretty good uh engage in my opinion you know they've got the narbash speed the twin blast dash the crunch dash the severog dash there's there's a lot that they can do to kind of counteract any misplays or miss uh uh placements and stuff by indecisive they need to they need to just pick up on missed opportunities from from the last game and i think there's actually a real chance here all right who's moving forward to the semifinals tomorrow is it going to be indecisive or the hive is this our last game of the day potentially let's find out because we're sending it to tj and Fralkin. Thank you so much, Ardog. Welcome, everyone, to the battleground for game number two in this matchup between Indecisive and Hive. A, dare I say, decisive victory for Indecisive in game number one. Sorry, I'm, I'm here all week. Don't worry. Um, but the Hive is where I want to start with, Frauken. I mean, this comp that they have creative, I quite like it. But is it enough to get this game two victory? It's definitely better than the first game there. has a lot more front line. There's a lot more CT that can actually be used on uh, this composition. There is still a few question marks. Running the Severog back into this Grux is going to be interesting to say at least. It didn't go well in the first game. Obviously, Nuxlet is going to play the crunch at this time. So he's going to be a bit more of a presence in this game compared to the Kalari compared to the last game. And I mean, the dual lane is fine. It's a lot safer compared to the Drongo uh, Deco lane we saw, but they aren't going to really have the presser. And it's going to be, mm. again, indecisive public control in this early game. Yeah, it is that Twin Blast Narbash lane that we did see earlier on today as well. The late game coming out for this duo. In fact, I'd say like that for this Hive composition, that late game is actually looking pretty good across the board. But my one question though, Falcom, is with the way the Indecisive are playing, do we even get to that point? I mean, if it's anything like last game, no. I mean, it's 20, what, 23 minutes, 24 minute game? Yes, and they took all minutes. prime on spawn, so... If, yeah, anything like that happens again, there's just no way Hive is going to be in a position to go for something. And, I mean, I think they have the tools to extend the game better than they did last time. But Indecisive, once again, probably just has a good amount of lane presence. And especially Morose, who basically did do nothing last game, he might be able to do something this game instead. 
just unlocking that drugs though i mean there were a large part of that game one cast was basically casting this 4v4 and the island on the right hand side i mean Boros, it feels like spent more time in the blue side jungle of the hive than his own lane at this point and very much like game number one we're seeing import with the road to, with the invade but left hand side neff just does not miss first blood gonna be picked up once again by the indecisive adc Import invading on blue buff, Neff getting first blood. Haven't we seen this game before? Noxley is going to go for the invade compared to it this time. He isn't the healthiest, and Mankey and Neft are still around. They've only got warps in the lane as well. So I'm not sure what they can really do this. And look where Sin is immediately rotating. Oh, sorry, that's Atomic, sorry. Immediately rotating over to help Noxley out. But whilst this is all happening, Import's just taking the entirety of the blue side jungle. Their money's back in. Yeah, he is at least going to uh, leave one of those camps up on the right hand side. Nux are actually going to do a bit of vertical jungling here just to take away this blue buff. Manku going to be trying to at least get him out of the way. Boinks is here to help out, but Nux is going very low and Shin is here from the mid lane. Utilize that pressure. Nux goes for the blink over the play. That's going to be a blink to follow as well, but Neft is there into his waiting arms. Going to pick up his second kill of the game as Nux gets caught out, but they're going to go for even more because the Narbash drum solo comes to an end and boinks drops as well we have definitely seen this game plan before um yeah not a good start for hive probably one of the worst starts you could possibly go no slip went for that invade and just did not work out and now he has to return back to his own side which only has one camp up so import is going to have a massive lead once again in that jungle neff getting two kills on in the early game as well and well, we saw what he did with the lead last game, and there's not much talk to see why this wouldn't be any different. But one thing we haven't mentioned yet, and for people who may not know, Neff hates Drongo. Yeah, th this is uh, one of them picks, especially with the e in the EU scene. You just do not see Neff to play at all. He will play literally any of ADC, but with Drongo, it seems that a lot of teams want a favorite for now. It's Morose has got to deal with the one versus two. And it's easy. It's just going to try and get away. Guru going to go for the slide and glide as well. Throws just simply going to run it out. Smash and grab Snugs it back underneath the tower. Looking to return that damage. Snugs it's taking a lot of damage. The boulder toss came through from Impor, but not going to find his mark just yet. But now Snugs is low. Mr. Guru half HP as well. And they just have to concede this side of the lane and Impor. And take himself a Cyan buff. Oros was so smart just knowing that there was not enough damage from the side of Hive to actually force his blink out. Him keeping that means that he's going to be safe for a separate gank if that happens. And he can go, even go aggressive and try and look for a kill if he so can. On to Guru. We're going to have a bit more fighting in this duo lane. Manku once again has a good amount of poke, but Drongo doesn't have as much poke compared to the wave of last game. So they're going to be more looking for that all in at level six. Hmm. And that's something that we have seen time and time again as well, combining with that shrapnel cannon in towards uh, the Man-Q Dread Nova. He's going to throw out the Aether Crystal, going to root up points. He's going to miss that funk as well, and he's on the retreat. man -Q on the hunt, maybe going to find it with the lob shot, but not going to find it. It is on cooldown. Boinks able to start healing themselves up as well in the back. We can see man -Q is not letting this pressure relent, and now it nugslets. Coming in from behind as well. Maybe looking for a gang, but Neft and Mankyu are very far, very close to their tier one tower. Because it needs to choose their moment to go in. Might actually bump in towards Mankyu. Is that's going to give up the ghost anyway? There's just a lot of pressure on this left hand side. Neft and Mankyu are playing this lane so smart, knowing when they can go aggressive, knowing that when they haven't got the pressure to actually look for anything, and just sniffing out that no slip was nearby. I don't know how they did that. No slip walked over zero wards, but as soon as he got around, he they immediately backed off and just played that as well as they could off. And now they are just continuing to be safe. No slip once again was forced to go back to farming as much as he can and is still behind against Import, who is a level ahead at this stage of the game. He's going to be going back and getting that last this as soon as he can. And Morose, again, just dealing with Guru so easily in this offlane. It's such a, a difficult lane matchup as well, as uh, we, you were highlighting and spoke about it earlier, Frauk, in this um, 
that with especially in game number one you know that grox in towards the several lane really isn't a fun time for the several at least but looking on the mini rat rotation might look towards his pick on towards shin's how it's so he's playing on this right hand side mr guru is here immediate make it rain is going to be popped gets a fair amount of damage down but that's just the safety that how provides and it's just going to be the mid lane getting away he didn't use anything to get that ultimate out, so that's at least some presser that Hive can use in that mid lane. But because they knew, because Incisive knew exactly where that was, they can immediately go on to this flank too. They know that Boinks is still in the middle of rotating, they know that Atomic hasn't really got anything else. And although Sin hasn't got his ultimate, they don't need it because the duo lane is so far ahead. Import can easily pick it up as well. And now he has that lower six, he has that behemoth, and will probably look for a gank instantly. That left lane is also very far pushed up as well. Just keeping our eyes on Nugslet as well. Maybe trying to look towards Morose potentially. We'll try and help out in this mid lane. As, uh, it seems that they might have eyes to know that uh, Import is going to be on the left hand side. So an opportunity here as Nugslet is going to uh, pounce there with the knock up. Morose finally burns that blade, but Nugslet goes underneath the tower with the crush with the knock up as well. And Morose is going to be dropped. The hive get on the board, but nothing in this game is taken for free when it's against Indecisive as Nep finds Boinks. Import underneath the tower can't find the killing blow, and Waltz keeps themselves alive. A good trade out for Hive, at least. They managed to. Give Guru a chance to breathe in this lane. Give him a few more chances to stack up. And although Morose, yeah, he kept the blink last time, but it still didn't matter because the damage was more than enough. He didn't blink early enough to actually um, try and survive under tower. If he had a bit more HP, he might have been able to force Nozlet to take an extra two tower slots. And that would have been very, very helpful. But obviously, in the size of land, uh, get Neff fed. He has three kills at this stage of the game. He's going to go back. He's going to get that Vanquisher online at nine minutes. So he's already very far ahead. Probably go into... I'd probably say size just a second, but you definitely want to look for some Tainted against points as well. That might be down to Man Q to do this game. And um, yeah, no opening time is being taken either, but look where in the slice we're going. This is that right-hand side. It was the mini prime as well. Imports just in the jungle. Shin linking up as well. Maybe uh, trying to get a little bit of revenge for Morose as well. But the wards coming down indicate that they might want to go for that mini prime play in a moment at least. But I haven't got that pick just yet. Although saying that Indecisive have been more than willing to pull the trigger and even go for the fight afterwards. They know how far they are ahead here. But so this game isn't completely lost though for the Hive. Just looking at the mini map. See that Nuxa is once again on this right hand side. Knows that Morose does not have the blink available from this one. It's just waiting in the wings, especially if Morose decides to face check. There's no wards enough in this dawn side. Morose is going to walk forward, places his own ward down as well. He's just going to pass through all through the river as well into where Nuxa is waiting forward, crunch knock up as well. And Morose has got the ultimate. He's going to get the stun from the Warlords Challenge and look to out auto attack. But reinforcements are here. Look towards the mini map, indecisive. Starting to group up Atomic, moving over. There's a kill on the left hand side where we're staying with the right. It's going to be Shin with the blink, with the with the landmine as well. The smash and grab. Looking for picks, not going to find it. Boulder toss coming out from input towards Mr. Guru. Colossal blows against the wall. Shadow glides away and a blink to try and get to safety but indecisive still on the hunt and hive just gonna be that one trade in the left hand side looks like adc for adc i mean all of that action and it's the other side of the map that actually has the kills we're not entirely sure what happened but either way that is going to be a massive shutdown for the side of hive mm. to get those that kill on to warps in this game so a good sewing but if important worse can get this mini prime that's not gonna be too bad no slit is very very low there's no chance of him walking in they do take it and sin just does an extra bit of damage get um i think one camp there i would hope that they give it over to morose which they do so this means that he can just continue bullying mr guru in this off lane and if we have a look at just over wall now it's not looking good. Goo has a 40 CS at 11 minutes. That is, uh, I think that just so, kind of sums up that lane, really, or what happens when you go against Morose. And that is even, excuse me, with that gank coming through as well, Morose having that one death to his name, just having that lead at this point in the map, you know, across the board, indecisive starting 
to pull ahead a little bit in the pressure as well. Not quite blowing the game completely wide open, but you can imagine with these upcoming neutral objectives, there's still towers on the board, and Indecisive haven't quite found that big team fight win just yet. It's a lot of isolated skirmishing and a bit of fighting as well. I don't actually expect either team to really want to do that 5v5. I think Indecisive really want to lit. Uh, leave Moros on this island, just let them split push in and go for those four reinforce if they can because that's going to keep Guru basically isolated from the rest of his team and Guru can just not win a 1v1 against the likes of a Grux on Moros. So that's going to be very much their game plan. Hive on the other hand also really likes these small skirmishes but probably wants it even smaller to get to those picks. And speaking of picks, we've got Sin and uh, Input here. Yeah, able to link up with that landmine, but not actually able to find the mark at least. So uh, Atomic is able to get away for now. So uh, just uh, seeing that moving around, the Fang Tooth has spawned as well. So it's going to be where the next potential fight is going to be in the size of what you have the five members. And uh, Boink's caught Dead. out in the river. They're going to be without their Narbash. The size of sort comes through onto net. They're just fighting for import. Goes big mode. He's angry and he is after this backline. Leaping forward. What can he find? He's got a blink. He's got a bold and he's got a pick. And that's going to be a kill on towards Atomic Import. Finding a second kill. Morose coming over from the right hand side. But Indecisive going to take this mid lane tier one tower. And also going to pick himself a Fang Tooth. Do you think that taking import off of Crunch is going to be enough? That is never going to be enough to stop the likes of import. The Rampage has been so useful getting those uh, picks, especially with the help of Mankyu as well, getting that dragged over. I'm not entirely sure why Boinks was there. There was no that Boinks should be the one face checking into the likes of Indecisive when you have the likes of Nugslet on that side of the map as well. And Rose's rotation was so good as well. Just going into the mid lane, not having to fully commit into that fight. But he's got a 2v1 now. And he has actually got that many prime buffers. The Warlord challenge will be issued as so much return Jeez. damage. And Shin is here just to provide a bit of a love tap and take down Nugslit. Now Mr. Guru throws down the side, the, uh, the Colossal Blow. But the make it rain onto Guru's parade. Not going to find the mark, but maybe going to get the pick. The blink, the smash and grab. Guru stays alive under the tower. But just get just enough HP to keep himself going. Morose forced to blink. Not going to find the kill. That was so close. There's no auto attack. So There's no bleed follow up. And Guru escapes with his life. That is going to be a blink out of Morose as well. Not that he really needs it at this point. He's very much a boxing. Hasn't got that many time up either at this point. So it might look like there is going to be a trade for trade. But Tomic is looking for Neft. And that is uh, really in a world of pain right now. Does that man cue does have import? They are on the way. Starting so assault lands, and there is the ultimate coming out from Atomic. A shutdown on towards Neff, but it is not going to be for free. It never is with this team as his top as import is there to trade one for one. And he even once more does not have much mana though. Maybe he doesn't want this fight to go on. And that's gonna be the call to back away. It's just gonna be a pick for pick. Pick for pick, but they lose the tower in that solo side and they don't gain in the duo. They spent too long trying to kill Neft. He managed to survive for such a not a long time, but a long enough time to allow Endport and Man Q to get back to that lane to hold it. And oh that just God. means they get that small advantage once again. Morose is now, I would say, unlocked, but I'd like to see him just keep on pushing at that solo side because there's nothing else he really needs to do. The rest of the team is winning. His best bet is just to create as much pressure as he can in this off lane to force the likes of Nugget, to force the likes of Atomic to rotate over to his side. And that leaves Indecisive to allow uh, to be able to play a lot more freely on the rest of the map. They say uh, to play a lot more freely, but I don't even think Indecisive needs to do that necessarily. At least they kind of have the freedom of the map at least. But, you know, Hive's still able to answer back with some kills. It's not been very easy at all. Boink's going to take a lot, a fair amount, a bit of a chunk. But the healing starting to come online for this duo lane as well it means that Boink's actually has healed all of that damage that they have taken. There are some good signs and glimmers of hope coming from the Hive squad. But again, this hill it seems like a bit of a mountain to climb against this indecisive team. As you compare it to game one, it is actually going a lot better than the Hive. At this point in the game, it was basically over there was no slip was not in the game anymore neft was a absolute monster and that hasn't really happened this game i've done a lot better job of just making sure that neft isn't able to be completely free he is still free two and four he still has kills but just is not able to immediately run down the likes of no the likes of walks and boinks so a good sermon from there 
They are still behind. They still have to play around this third Fang Tooth and the mini prime that spawns. And Import is a monster in this game. Looks like he is going to go for the engage on towards Mankyu, but the Yif Crystal body blocks and he's able to blink away. A good crash cut, bam, boom, comes out from Boink to knock up on three members. The landmine, the one to two, and that combustion proc does so much damage. Able to dissuade the hive from staying any further. Recall will have to be channeled by Nug's lip, but there is no um, objective up at the moment. Morose has got bored of his right hand side, and now he's going to start Gruxing all over Atomic. The boulder was there just in case, but Morose is going to find an isolated kill and in the side now looping behind the tier one tower they want this dual lane they want to unlock the tier one shin is there with import as well import just pops the bam off targeting towards boys to make a rate on towards warps as well boys able to get the jump but imports jump goes a little bit further and that's going to be boys falling down warps underneath the tier two as indecisive flood members into the left hand side whilst all this goes on the hive starting up this mini prime it gives him a chance, but Morose can probably take this 2v1. He has Warlord's Challenge, he has the Ice Corn. It's going to back off. He knows that he can't actually out hunt Luxlit, who is still 100% healthy in this fight, so doesn't want to risk going for that trade. In the meantime, Indecisive does gain that tier 1. They are looking for this tier 2. They know that Luxlit is still in mid lane. There's no threat of actual taste coming out yet because of where import is. But with the rest of the Hive returning, they are going to reset here. They are continuing to play it safe, but Nuxley is going to try and close them off. Going to go for the old pincer move. Looks like he'll have to uh, get up these stairs into the left-hand side before they crash to underneath the tier 1 tower. I think Mankyu just uh, popped his head around the Shadow Curse as well to see where Nuxley is, but Import's on the way. And also, you've got Morose coming straight in from left-hand side to four members. This will be no, a no 4 versus 5 with Morose on the way, but Nuxley's going to be caught out by a boulder toss, caught out by the Dreadnova, and caught out by Indecisive. The crunch is down, but what more can Indecisive get as points the next target, trying to provide the margin of people. That's a good amount of return damage from a top. Atomic Boulder Toss gonna go wide. Atomic actually flicks in and gets a kill on towards Shin. But now Morose is here. The Grox is entered the fray and he wants to shut this down. He's gonna find one Atomic, the next target. A good double sizing assault where the Boulder Toss lands this time and nowhere for. Nowhere for this Bellica to go indecisive. Gonna find three for one and immediately start up their third Bank Tooth objective. And uh, Nosley like just. He went and was looking for the Tower Dive or the like and just was not out just not in position whatsoever for the import rotation the walk into the argus dread nova was enough cc to lock him down for long enough for sin to rotate over and sin has got a lot of money he has got a lot of items and no slit definitely does not the only thing he really had was that mini five at that stage of the game with him being blown up i've had no real recourse to do anything else on the fight. We have Morose just rotating over as well for good measure. They get that third Fang Tooth. They can look for this Orb Vine. And I mean, they could do it on cooldown once again. It's not even spawned yet. They're definitely in position as well. You know, 10 seconds until that Orb Prime objective does spawn on the right hand side. Indecisive. Got Neft. Over on his lone on the left hand side, but I think Neft is going to be pretty safe and feeling pretty confident in that left hand side. Just pushes the wave in, a bit of a grouping up from the indecisive team over towards this mid lane. Hive just ma just mirroring, just matching the moves, moving from right to left. Import inside of this uh, jungle here, but he's got the blast cone. Yeah, he's got a pounce as well. Stunders land on towards Man Cube. That's a, so much return damage again. It just feels like the Hive need to burst one of these members so quick before they can respond, but Indecisive are everywhere. Just the amount of CC and allows Sin to basically play how he wants. The House of Damage has been monumental this game. He's level 12. He hasn't got the Obelisk, so he's not going to be doing that one shot. But just, yeah, things like that will be enough to deal with Hive. It just means that they aren't able to fight on their own systems and with import able to basically be unkillable uh things like this happen yeah boinks uh, went for the funk as the crash bam boom is going to be popped that's just easily interrupted and boinks is going to fall inside of their own red jungle as well morose pushes in the mid lane indecisive grouping up as five once again the world this map is just their oyster at the moment and it looks like the call will be for this all prime they saw warps on left. They know that Boinks is not alive. Nuxlick could go for a steal. 
but indecisive with how they're playing today are able to communicate they're able to know that they should rotate over Jin is playing around we got Neff doing a lot of damage with his passive to this orb prime so it is going to go down pretty fast Hive need to do something quickly yeah, Nogsit going to engage on towards Jim, but Nogsit is nowhere near this pit. And actually, Nogsit just gets obliterated off the map by Shin. Manku also helping out with the ultimate, the obliterator, finding a mark of Orb Prime. Going to be picked up by your team on Dawnside. Warps completes the split push. Is able to at least take the Tier 2 tower down, but indecisive have eyes on a much bigger prize. A Tier 2 tower in mid and, and starts to look towards these inhibitors. It's a few minutes later, but we're still in the same sort of position as the last game. They need to defend these inhibitors as much as they can. But who is not getting Whoa! I mean, Boulder Toss into Landmine, and uh, Mr. Guru is at least able to limp back towards his fountain to heal up. We can just see the pick potential coming out from Indecisive as well. Whoever that Boulder Toss lands and connects is going to get a trip back to the fountain, whether or not they, they want to, but that's not really the point anyway. Morose against Nugslet and Mr. Guru, but Morose is level 15. Nugslet is four levels behind on that right-hand side, and Indecisive just pulling and constricting in there's so death gonna be hit by a seismic sword and also funk as well but net just keeps himself alive and returns the damage in kind of but he's down once again import going big mode to tank up this inhibitor knocks in the next target he's booped around by all the displacement all the landmines in the world but keeps himself alive more importantly right hand side in here falls to morose just gonna keep to complete this clean sweep of inhibitors taking the mid lane they could look left they could even look to end the game I don't think they're going to look to end the game. They have got points coming up in a few more seconds. And I, I just want to get points out of position, playing a frontliner like not playing a frontliner, but they are playing a Narabas. That's not a frontliner. You need to be at the carries playing the enchanters. And yeah, they're just going to look for an end. They don't have the minion waves actually set up, though. They're going to come in at in order at times. So they need to look for a few more kills. Oh, Guru got booped out by a landmine on the back end, and that's the tank down, and that's the crunch falling as well. This team, when they all play on the same page, when they all be on the same page, when they all sing from the same hymn sheet as well, there's some beautiful play coming out. It's 19 kills to four. They just need a couple more minion waves to hit on towards the tower. The health bars are very low, but they're so far ahead, I don't even think it matters because Shin's starting to hit on towards the core. Manicu gonna drop the neck going low. Warps actually no, no. blinks forward and gets to shut down on towards Neff and the Hive might be able to collapse, might be able to answer back, but imports big mode and slaps down warps on our right hand side. The core still under attack from these minion waves that needs to be dealt with. Imports throws the boulder, but not gonna find a mark. Indecisive might have just overstayed their welcome and they will back away. Yeah, it was worried. The HP was not really high enough. They needed to wait for that all prime regen to actually come through, but they were just a bit too over aggressive. And Atomic got a good shutdown on to Neft. And as soon as that happened, that was kind of it over. Yes, Import did get a kill back on to Warps in that situation, but you kind you can't really do anything without Neft. He is your main damage source on these objectives, and instead they have decided to fall back. That core is not healthy whatsoever we can see it on that mini map probably 20 percent hp so one minion wave would be enough but instead of like risking that, that and just one. hard pushing it in um yeah yep. like that one yeah the right lane in uh minion wave gonna crash but thankfully warps is there and as you mentioned falcon it's so weak that if the hive lose track of any of these minion waves that might just be curtains of this game we're gonna look to try and contest the primordial Blaze, the Fang Tooth, on his left hand side. Import is here with the hunts, but indecisive. Don't really care about the objective. It was just a ploy. It was all part of the game. Get Mr. Guru to try and face tank. What are you and that's doing, gonna be him dropping points. Goes in with a crash bam boom. Just to zone members out, but import is going big mort mode on towards the back line and boinks is down. Atomic does at least get the kill. That's going to be Neff dropping, but it is gonna be a trade as well. Atomic cleaning up house. So we're morose here as well. It's just dominoes falling one after the other after the other multi kills are plenty hive lose four and indecisive look to close out this game there's no need to do prime fountain if wars is the only one alive even if he was fed to high heaven i don't think this is really possible with the health p of that core let alone being as low as he is uh, indecisive might go for the kill but they are just going to have to go for the end they haven't got that many minions this has been an 
easy 2-0 for the side of Indecisive. Yeah, sometimes you can't really sugarcoat it. Congratulations to the Indecisive team. They secure your final spot in tomorrow's semi-finals. They will be playing against the Chefs in that second series of the day. W well played by Indecisive. Uh, again, I I'm, it's low-hanging fruit, but uh, hey, that's normally when the fruit is the most ripest, right? And that was just decisive across the board. This was a team in full communication with everyone. Like, we didn't see a uh, Falcon. I see you rolling your eyes as well. I saw that as the camera banned to us as well. <laughs> oh, I mean, man, but uh, commiserations... Me? Uh, yes, ye yes, I can, Falcon. Uh, commiserations, of course, to the hive as well, especially in that game too. Definitely were starting to make it a little bit more difficult, but I think with how indecisive we're playing, there was only one way that series was going to end. And it makes things very interesting. We were on the fence of indecisive. Were they going to be good? Were they going to struggle in this ping sort of situation? But they've come out swinging, and they have come out very, very strong. And that just leads me to be even more hyped for tomorrow. Yeah, there's going to be some absolute banger matchups. That's going to do it from us on the casting desk. We're going to throw it back to the analyst desk to break down that game and close out today's show. Thank you so much, TJ and Frauken. We'll see you tomorrow. But my goodness, three minutes in and indecisive secure to kill per minute and ultimately finish with 24 kills. We saw how oppressive their duo lane was, but then you have Import who has his eyes on every OBJ, Morose, as well as Shin who knows how to play any mid laner you put him into. GG's and thanks for playing Hive. What a terrifying team, but Ed, what else happened during that game? I mean, Import is just controlling the map. That guy is, he's a god king. I mean, he earned that nickname for a reason. He made the jungle, he lives in the jungle, he owns the jungle. So there's not much that that other teams can really do against that. I mean, he's he's that, that's his home. So he's going to defend that with everything he's got and he doesn't really have to worry about his lanes too much. He's got Neft in the duo lane and Morose in the solo lane. That is a that is a very strong team overall. He showed no mercy from game 1 to game 2. But what else were your observations from game number 2, Lance? that indecisive looks like a team that very well could breeze through tomorrow the rest of our teams looked very good there seems to be a larger gap between indecisive and hive than the, any of the other matchups that we had seen they look very formidable they look so terrifying we'll, we'll have to see what they will pull out tomorrow but speaking about these other teams let's take a look at who else is playing tomorrow all right, we're looking at this bracket. Every single team who made it out of our quarterfinals are absolutely full of gamers here. But Lance, you got to talk to us. What are the semifinals we're seeing tomorrow? So the first semifinal, we're going to see the professors taking on D-Lab. I think that that one is almost guaranteed to go to the three full games. I can't really see either one of these teams sweeping the other one. And it's got giga gamers from the very top to the very bottom in it the second one we're going to see is the team that we just saw destroy hive indecisive take on chefs who kind of struggled in the early game of, against what if we'll have to see if they're able to correct that in less than 24 hours against a more formidable opponent in indecisive but i also wouldn't be surprised in the slightest if that one goes to three games this is the four best teams and predecessor i don't think that there is any doubt about it we have the professors, D Lab, the chefs, and indecisive. Any of these teams can win here. And like what you mentioned, Lance, the games will be even tighter and closer as these teams battle it out. And when you're playing at this level, you have to be able to play every hero at a high level and play at an extremely high caliber. But tomorrow we find out who is the best and who will be able to call themselves a prime championship circuit champion. 
Thanks everybody for being a part of our stream. Uh, we have to say thanks to the players, especially, and the teams that took part in our event today. We have to say PCC is not possible without you, as well as our production, our social media, all the way down to our graphics, and including those who are part of the creation of our videos, that really sick trailer that you saw earlier. The moderators, the casters, and of course, the desk. We're still raising funds for a prize pool and our production team here at the PCC. Exclamation point support for that GoFundMe link. If you're enjoying the production, please help us with a subscription or a follow. It means a lot to all of us. Thanks everybody for tuning in. My name is Ardog with the Triple G signing out you as your host here at the PCC. And of course, we've got Ed to my left. How will the people catch up with you? Uh, you can find me on Twitch, EasyEd93. Uh, don't really use too much on socials other than that. I stream every now and then when I have free time. Uh, summer's coming and then it's boat season, so I'm going to go into hiding on that. But yeah, that's pretty much about it. And what about you, Lance? You can find me all over the internet, anywhere that you search Lance Cecil. We actually just made a tab in the main PCC Discord, which you should join if you haven't, by the way, that has a link to all of the main people's socials in it. Most importantly, I want to highlight, go follow Hot Sauce's Instagram. Hot Sauce, the guy with the graphics since day one for PCC. Back when we were ATS, the man deserves some love. And we are also on YouTube, Instagram, X, Twitch, and show some love to everybody here at the PCC organization. Um, thank you so much, everybody, for watching. It's been a journey, but we're going to be seeing you tomorrow. So we will be back tomorrow for our semifinals and grand finals starting 11 a.m. EST or 5 p.m. CET. Thanks, everybody. Bye now.